So we're putting, we're painting on the separator so the two materials don't stick to each other. This is how you make a GI mask for your model. Okay, we're gonna squirt that, that moulage into place. <clears throat> and I'll preface by saying in the other video, we trimmed all this off. We still can here just to get into the habit of doing it. It's not critical because there aren't any removable dies here to make space for the pins so that, you know, uh, so we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. <clears throat> So we may just leave this one alone and just keep all the information that is there. Okay, so we'll start squirting. We want to get, well, first of all, these have to make sure that these are placed all the way down. You don't have any gaps. Make sure they're rotationally placed in the correct manner as well. If you're, if you're doing an open tray, <clears throat> it should be screwed in holding the analog and screwing it this way rather than holding this and screwing it like this because you could twist that impression coping in the impression and then everything is wrong okay <clears throat> so here we go And then you tell me, oh my God, that's a lot of material. What are you doing? Okay, well, I'll show you later. I'll show you, I'll show you. We're trying to cover all the way up to the engaging portion where the two meet. If you don't incorporate that, you're just gonna bury it in stone later, so. Go ahead and pour a lot and incorporate it now. Get all the undercuts. Okay. Now we're going to let that set. We'll remove it. Remove it because I will pull this off uh, in a minute. I'm going to trim in approximately, right, between the implant and the, the tooth. So I'm eyeballing this right I don't know for sure and I'm pushing all the way down and stabbing basically the impression right because I want a nice clean cut oh look at that perfect okay and then we do the same thing on this one <clears throat> okay see and cutting Pretty close. All right, pull that over. Same thing with this side. Okay, <clears throat> so now we're gonna pull this. And might as well clean this corner up too. Okay, and we're pulling this because even though we put separated, the materials sometimes want to stick together anyway. Here's that film of material. It's separating the material. If it's on there, it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. Let me pull this one off too. Now, if we had gone in and trimmed this back, it would be easier to remove this. So maybe we still want to get into the habit of, re of removing it. <clears throat> Unless, of course, you're making an RPD or a denture or whatever. You don't need all that information. Okay, so now we're going to clean up that mess. But do you see that interface right there between the analog 
see that interface right there? Between the replica and the analog, mm -hmm. this interface. Mm -hmm. We want to keep that interface covered with this material so that when you pour your stone, you don't have stone below that line. And the reason for that is because then later when you pull this off, when you check your uh, uh, the fit of your casting or if you had it milled or whatever, and you place it on your model, you can actually see it seat completely. Otherwise, there's going to be stone there. And if there's stone there, you're going to want to cut it, cut it back anyway so you can see that completely seat. So when we trim this back, we want to keep in mind not to trim past that line. And you can see that line, where that line is right there. You see that lip? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to try and keep our blade from going past that lip. And very carefully, do not injure yourself. Start to trim it back. Okay, <clears throat> now I like these nice angular flat surfaces because when you pour your stone and you have your model and now you're, it's in your model and you pull this out, you want nice flat surfaces on the stone. Because if you have a whole bunch of garbage like that, try putting that back on your model in the same place without it pushing back, you know, because these little fingers are going to just get in the wrong places. So nice, flat, clean cut edges. All right. Now we're going to put this back in here. Make sure it's seated all the way. Carefully, don't push on this. <clears throat> Same thing with this one. Make sure we don't, we're not cutting past that lip. Okay, and that lip is still there. That's good. All right, we're going to go back into the impression. It should feel like a little pop when you put it back in there. So, all right, gotta get rid of all this trash. And then we're going to pour that up. And I think we can pour it all at the same time. Okay, so four packets means four measures of water, 14, 28, 28, 56, there we go. Do you always use the water? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Unless it's mounting stone. Right. If you're mounting. If you're using it for verification jig which I will use mounting stone for verification jig, and I use the right materials and the right amount. <clears throat> so somebody saw me do this little trick before, it's the same thing. If I'm really close, you can't just pour it out. It's just not that accurate. So you, don't so you wick some of it away, you just get to the line. Okay. And remember again, you want this to be not bone dry, but not soaking wet. And again, the reason for that is because if it's bone dry, it takes up to 2 milliliters of water to wet the surface, which means you will lose 2 milliliters, milliliters of water in your mix. which then affects your setting time and your expansion and your stone. Adding you variables to your project. The model is the most stuff, important you know, thing that you, that you create in the lab. I've watched the uh, foundation. <laughs> So, here we go. Water first. Then the stone, one by one. Be careful not to breathe. The dust that comes up, it's bad for you. It stays in your lungs and it does not go away. 
The condition is actually very close to asbestosis. It's called silicosis. And it does cause problems plan on being in the industry for a lifetime. So for this guy, the thing is, is I tried this in, the basin sit that well, but I, I didn't get the best wash of the pallet. I just needed something more stable. Now hopefully, I didn't hit my limit on the amount of packets I could use with this machine. I know I'd be alright in the old Whitmix vacuum mixer. In the, pr in the pressure box. Does it get hard? It soft. I probably it's soft, but then it's stable enough where it doesn't get all the way down. Have you had patients with like uh, feedback that you feel like it's too hard? Okay, we're safe. Yeah. I'm watching how high that goes. Like, you know. All right. So I think four packets is the limit for that. No. Spray your demobilizer. The surface wetting agent will help to release that surface tension and the stone will flow without being bubbles. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> just unscrew those because it's an open tray. Okay. And feel it click. And then just take a, um, let's see, let me go get one for you. <clears throat> take your buffalo knife. Set. And go around. It's okay if that breaks. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Just keep going. Okay. Let's see. Flip it around and see if that helps. The bird, do the, oh. the other side. There it goes. Awesome. Okay, so now we can steam that and the little flash of stone will go away and you'll have, you'll be ready, you're good to go. Let's do that. Okay, okay. okay. Should I wear these? Nah. Well, I say that and then you'll bring yourself some. <laughs> So yeah, okay, wear one. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. I'll hold it with my left hand. <coughs> Just steam it? Yep. 
<clears throat> They'll blow right off. Good. Nice, nice clean edges. Go. Nice sharp. Good. The little part won't come off, but I guess we can flake it off. And there yeah. it is. <clears throat> All right. Cool. cool. Very nice. Okay, now you can tr just trim it. Trim it so that you don't have any flash here. You know, mm -hmm. just trim it back. You're good to go. Awesome. <laughs>